What's up everybody, it's your boy Birdie, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on the basics of Dota 2 modding. Uh, basically, you need to have a start point for where you can understand how to go about creating a mod before you can really create one. So this one, this tutorial will cover that and from there you'll be able to easily view the other tutorials and understand what is going on. So the first thing is of course how to actually make a mod and the first thing to do is to press play and launch the Dota 2 Reborn beta tools. I assume you already have Reborn installed. If you don't you can right click Dota 2 here and go to properties and then you can go to DLC and you check the Reborn beta DLC. Now if we go to here and launch the tools you'll see this little pop-up here. Now this here is basically the launcher for all the different add-ons that you have on your computer. And as you can see there's a variety of them. Some of them were these ones with the locks were already there to begin with and then the rest are ones that I've created while I was testing various things. Now you can create an empty add-on which is completely blank or you can create a new add-on from an existing one. For example you can make a copy of Overthrow by pressing Overthrow and then clicking that. Uh, for different add-ons you can also create desktop shortcuts and but what we're going to do is create an empty add-on. Now we want to call this one how about YouTube test mod YouTube test mod 10,000 now we'll create that and then we go launch Dota workshop tools now the Dota 2 workshop tools are actually a collection of different tools hence the plurality of the word and there's quite a bunch of useful things in them. Unfortunately, the scripting is not contained within the Dota 2 tools except for being able to view any errors that the script produced. So we'll look at that last, but to begin with, we'll just open up the Asset Browser. Now the Asset Browser uh, is basically your console or uh, your command, your control panel, your command center for where you get started with everything. So here you can see that there's a lot of different assets and these are all just the stuff that is included with Dota and you can also add your own. A lot of what you should probably be doing when you're testing stuff is using the template map here. The template map is quite handy because it's just a big blank space and it has a spawner in the middle. Uh, so we can open that up but first if you see all these icons up here these are the different tools that are included with the workshop tools and if we go to the tools menu we'll be able to see what they are actually titled so we've got hammer the map editor the material editor the model editor the particle editor source filmmaker which is for making machinima and workshop manager uh, the workshop manager is for when you finish your mod and you want to publish it to the workshop so that other people can play it um, we'll have a tutorial about that later and we'll have a tutorials on all these things in more depth later but and the final one which is a little bit uh, harder to explain is the console which we'll also open up and have a look now the console basically contains uh, all the output from Dota whenever it does stuff um, it, uh, for example uh, this here is basically when it launched the workshop tools it spammed all of this information here and when you launch your map it will also print out information now the reason this is useful is for one thing we can print out different messages to this console so we can bug test with it and also any errors that uh, come out will be printed here and we can look at them specifically now if we wanted to look at just um, a particular type of one of these types here for example we wanted to look at say the material system to see any problems with the material system then we right click it and go open a new log viewer and it will show just material system errors or messages anyway that's enough about that we'll get into more depth for these different things later we just want to have a rough overview of everything for now so uh, the material editor is for modifying textures it's uh, basically the skin that everything can is covered with. Uh, the model editor is your models which are the characters and the terrain and so on and so forth. The particles are like flames and uh, different effects essentially, all the different effects that are applied in Dota. 
and the Hammett map editor is what we're going to open up now. To do that we're actually just going to open the template map here by double clicking and it will open up that map in Hammer. Now it looks quite complex and intimidating to begin with and we will look at it later to determine what everything does but uh, suffice to say that you can press F9 when you're in this here and it will give you this menu here which is very useful because it will allow you to build the map uh, so if we check that and there's different options here but we'll just build the map and put that in the background and we'll have a look at what it does in a moment now the other important thing to notice is that there's no trigger editor in uh, source 2 in terms of a GUI so you have to manually create any scripts which modify the user interface or modify the game logic so what we're going to have a look at next is actually not the scripts themselves just yet but we're going to install some tools which will help us modify those scripts more easily so the first thing I want you to do is open up your browser and go to uh, search for sublime in Google and you'll see two op uh, some options here choose the second one and download that or you can choose the um, you can use sublime text 2 if you prefer uh, but I personally would just use this one because it's easy peasy and it's newer now this is just a text editor which I've already installed and it ha the reason we want to use it is because it has these two things here which I'll put these links in the description now these are basically plugins for Sublime Text which allow us to modify the scripts for Dota with some syntax highlighting. This essentially means that uh, important keywords are highlighted with a different color and uh, this GIF here has a demonstration of the autocomplete which gives you a list of, for example in this case he's showing some of the modifiers which pop up. Um, so that's really great for us because then we can basically more easily work out what the correct stuff is to type in. Uh, so I'm going to open up Sublime Text now and he's got tutorials on the site which you can follow yourself and that will teach you how to install his plugins and here's Sublime Text here which is just our text editor. Now what we really need to look at is uh, the folder, the Dota 2 beta folder. I'm going to open up two different windows here so we can have a look at the two folders which are created when you create an add-on. Now if I recall correctly our add-on was called something crazy like uh, we'll find out in a moment but um, something to do with YouTube, something like YouTube test 10,000 so actually two YouTube test 10,000 folders are created and on the left here we'll look at the content folder so we go content Dota add-ons and then YouTube test mod 10,000 and it's got some four folders here and then over on the right side we'll go to game Dota add-ons and YouTube test mod 10,000 there's a few different folders and some of the same folders very strange so what this is is essentially the game folder is all of the information that Dota needs to run the custom mod and the content folder is any information which is in its uncompiled form. Uh, what this means is that you'll put some raw information into this folder and it will generate uh, compiled forms of that information here. For example uh, the, in the materials folder uh, there should be, yeah there, so there's some pictures here and if we go to the materials folder over here, uh, we should find, ah, it hasn't compiled, and let's have a look, overviews, yeah, so if we look at overviews, then there's a TGA here, and over here it's compiled the TGA into, I believe it's compiled into the vtex underscore c here, which is a uh, compiled form of it, which Source2 is able to use. Now, if we go back to the folders we'll have a look at content first so content has got a flash folder here which has got some example flash uh, stuff which we can use to create custom user interfaces uh, the maps folder has got the map which in this case we opened up template map and that created a copy of template map and placed it here you could have multiple maps per add-on for example in the game the custom mod overthrow which uh, 
Valve created and which you've probably played, there's three different maps. I think it's a solo map, a two-player map, and a three-player map. And those you could so you can have a mod with multiple maps. Now, if we go to materials, then we'll see that there's, as we saw before, that there's going to be images in here essentially in their uncompressed, uncompiled form. You also put the particle textures inside here as well. Now the particles uh, folder here has got more particle information which is generated by the particle editor and we'll cover that in another tutorial. Uh, the other thing to realize is that when you're creating a user interface using Dota 2's Panorama UI uh, language I guess you could call it, uh, you actually create the folder inside content not in game and this makes sense now that we understand that one is compiled as one and one is uncompiled because the information the panorama information that we create in uh, content is uncompiled and then it is compiled somewhat in uh, the game folder when it creates a duplicate of it but then in compiled form now one of the annoying things which is takes a little bit of getting used to is that the scripts are stored inside game and not inside content at all uh, so if we open this up and we can see there's some text files here and there's some Lua files here. Uh, you might ask, well, why is it that they're not in content? Well, this is because script files are actually never compiled. So in their raw form, they're all ready to go and to be used by the source to editor. This is why they're like this. It means that it's annoying though, because you have to swap between the two folders when you're creating your mod. Just keep that in mind that most of the time when you're creating logic you're going to be inside the game folder and when you're creating user interface you'll be inside the content folder and that should keep you pretty straight for the most part. Now we're going to have a look at, uh, first off uh, as I said if you wanted to have panorama you need to create a new folder and call it panorama and then inside here we'll cover this in another tutorial which will probably be the next tutorial which will cover how to create a panorama user interface and there's several folders and files that we'll put inside here and on the flip side inside here uh, we can actually check out for example overthrow which has got a custom panorama user interface it will create duplicates of the script in their compiled form and we don't really have to put any information ourselves in this folder and it should be generated itself I believe. Now if we go back to YouTube test mod 10,000 and now we're going to just look at the game folder. Uh, we've already talked about these three folders here which contain compiled information uh, but resource contains flash 3 information and a very important file here add-on underscore English dot txt now you can also have add-on underscore Korean, Chinese, and so on, and those there essentially store the localized, uh, that means language specific, uh, text or strings that you use inside your mod. For example, if you call a hero uh, cat in English, then it will be called something else in Korean and something else in Russian and so on. Uh, that there means that you can have a mod which will reach many different countries in the world and still be understandable, although it is a bit more work on your part to create the different uh, localized files there. That is, of, of course, your option. Now, the add-on info, info.txt file contains some information about the different maps, and basically we'll cover that in another tutorial. And the big one that we're going to be looking at is in scripts. So scripts contains two folders and you can create more folders. And again, we'll talk about that in another tutorial. But the important folders here is we'll first look at MPC. Now MPC contains four text files by default and you can add others. A common additional fifth one is often MPC underscore abilities underscore override dot txt, which you use to override uh, abilities which already exist within the game. Uh, so let's open up abilitiescustom.txt in our Sublime Text. Now to use the plugin that we installed, we go to View and then to Syntax and then we select Dota KV which means Key Value. Now, now we can see it's nicely syntax highlighted and the important thing to know here is that the red is a key and the yellow is a value. Uh, 
anything within a curly brace is also a value so technically this entire section here is the value of dota abilities and everything within these brackets here is a value of templar assassin refraction holdout ah, water is amazing now so if we look here we can see that this stuff is just this sort of header information and don't worry about that too much but here we have a custom ability for temp called Templar Assassin Refraction Holdout. I have a tutorial covering a basic ability which you can look at to understand this file a bit better but basically we can see that uh, we have this information. Now let's say we didn't have this ability cooldown and we started typing ability and as you can see it's already come up with a bunch of possibilities if we start typing ability as to what the actual uh, result is that we want. So in this case we wanted ability cooldown I believe. So we select that and it automatically uh, fills out the information that we could possibly have in here. For example the default value of 8. So we could make it cooldown of 100 seconds and so on. And it did that, or did that automatically for us and that's because of the lovely uh, syntax highlighting of Dota KV which also includes snippets uh, the snippets being well it's actually done several that's interesting um, the snippets being uh, completed code for us which we can use then to fill out and modify now if we go back to our folders and this all of these are key value files all the .txt files are typically key value so basically you have a key and then you have a value and you use the key to um, as the, like the name of the value and then the value is the actual information control stored there sort of like having a letterbox in a house so the key is the letterbox and the house is the actual value if we go back to the scripts folder and we'll open up vscripts now this is where you'll spend probably the most of your time in terms of creating the game logic now let's open up add-on underscore game mode lua and oh we want to open it with sublime text let me just set that up yes there we go so uh, Lua, Lua is a scripting language which Valve has decided to use for Source 2. It's also used for many other things and there's a lot of tutorials on the internet about the syntax of it. I do suggest you look at a basics of one of them just so that you understand what you're doing here. I won't go into that as it's simply been done before and it's not worth wasting my time with. Now if we look here we can see that there's a bunch of functions here which you'll learn about when you go and watch a Lua tutorial or you'll already know about if you know some programming. Uh, inside them they have numerous function, uh, numerous uh, methods which are called and various information. Now I have got a tutorial on a custom ability which you can watch which will talk a little bit about making your own Lua files. But that basically covers the folder layout of everything and also helps you code with Sublime Text. Now one other thing which I'm going to show you is called Barebones, created by a guy called BMD. Now this is a very useful starting point for when you're creating a mod because he's already done a lot of the base work for you that pretty much all the mods are going to use. So if we open up, uh, let me just get the link, I'll put this in the description, so if we open up uh, this github and we'll just go download zip for now and you use this as he says here it's meant to be a jumping off point for creating a mod with all of the boilerplate plate taken care of you so this is all the annoying stuff that you have to start with and we just modify it to create our, our mod so if I open this up here and we'll extract it into the downloads folder and not worry about that too much so it's got a whole lot of really cool stuff in it and BMD is the man who created the Lobby Explorer before Valve released Reborn and a whole bunch of cool stuff. And there may have been other people, I'm not sure, so I'm sorry if I've missed anyone out. Anyway, open this folder up and you can see that there's game and there's content. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy content and go back to our content folder here and oh actually we'll go to Dota 2 beta folder and we'll paste content there and it will copy some stuff. Then we go to back to the bare bones and copy game and paste it into Dota 2 Beta. Same process. 
Now, if we open up Content and Dota Add-ons and Bare Bones, which is a new folder that's been added, then we can see there's some more folders, which we've got sounds in them, and we've got sound events and all sorts of interesting things already done for us. If we go back to here and go into Game and Dota Add-ons and Bare Bones, then we can see that there's already some scripts modified and added for us, all sorts of cool stuff. So, how do we make a mod if we're going to use uh, bare bones? I'll show you how in a moment, and we already more or less know this based on what we saw previously. So, after that all closes down, we'll open up the Reborn tools again. Dun, 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 dun. And here we can see, if we scroll up, there's bare bones as one of the add-ons. So, instead of creating an empty add-on, we'll create a new add-on from existing and we'll call it YouTube Test 20,000 because it's twice as awesome and then we'll launch the tools now what's this done is if we go back to Dota add-ons we now have YouTube Test 20,000 and it's already got all of the information that Barebones had in it without actually modifying the original Barebones stuff so that's really handy for us as you can see it's added some panorama, panorama information as well and we can open up the template map but what we're going to have a look at is just the scripts folder and we'll go to vscripts and we'll open up let's start with we'll start with settings so we won't go into too much detail into here because you can just have a look at all the different files that he's created and work it out yourself it's all pretty straightforward he's added comments on everything so you can see what it all does but for example here we can change the minimap icon size we can change whether or not there are runes i believe or we can change the spawn time sorry uh we can make the game end when there's a certain amount of kills or we can modify how many kills that is that is uh, we can change the xp uh, per level so we can make cool modifications and we can do custom team colors all sorts of fun things that he's already set forward for us in the settings folder uh, and we'll just quickly have a look at um, game mode so this has got all of the functions here preloaded for us with a bunch of outputs and everything and then all of the includes of information which he uses. He's also created a timers library which is very useful. Uh, a physics uh, Timers were used for for example let's say you wanted to do something every two seconds you wanted to create a new unit somewhere and make it walk down a track you can use a timer to do that. Physics is just for making for example rolling balls and bouncing balls and things projectiles uh, and projectiles is used for projectiles that's pretty obvious and notifications is the most recent library he added which is for sending uh, panorama user interface notifications onto the screen very fun stuff anyway that more or less gives you a starting point to work from and you can have a dig around now if you wanted to work out something the best thing to do is go to moddota.com or the subreddit which is I think reddit.com forward slash r forward slash uh, dota2 modding these are some good communities which you can find tutorials you can find tools and resources and there's a chat and IRC which you can chat to people about and ask questions of uh, the other thing which you need to do is and if you look at moddota at the bottom they've got this very handy link here to the development the developers wiki which valve has created and it's got a lot of information on all the different tools and particularly in scripting if you open up scripting and go to the scripting api there is a massive amount of information here and often you can just search up a particular function that you're looking for or a particular modifier and it will have all of that information there for you uh, which is very useful as a reference sheet now of course the uh, sublime plugins do a lot of this for you so you don't have to worry too much about it but if you need to you can do that anyway that will conclude this tutorial uh, I will be continuing to make more tutorials on variety of different things uh, the probably the next one will be about panorama 
and then we'll make one about more advanced abilities, custom items, uh, mapping with hammer, posting your add-on to the workshop and so on and so forth. This was Birdie and I'll see you guys later. Feel free to comment uh, with any criticisms or suggestions and also any suggestions for new videos that you'd like to see on stuff you don't know. GG, well played.